Hello everyone, and welcome to whatever this is. Today we have a really nice piece of history to show y'all, the TRS-80 X-Pad. Released in 1982, it is a color computer peripheral that allowed you to digitize points on a plane. It uses a tethered capacitance pen method of detecting X and Y position and proximity to the surface. The pen includes a pressure sensitive switch to detect contact. I really lusted for this device in the early 80s. It sold for $350 and was probably worth every penny. I remember visiting the Radio Shack Computer Center in Modesto on McHenry Avenue. I walked into the store and almost put down a deposit. The salesman looked very pleased. In the end, I didn't do it. I probably just bought a game cartridge. But the universe made me whole again two years ago when I got this fine example. Today I want to run through the demo of the unit. This software is from the back of the manual. If you decide to type in all of its millions of lines of code, it does a really good job of showing off what the device can do. Before I start, I want to repeat that this is a basic computer program. I think it not only shows off how powerful of a device this is, but it also shows just how capable the color computer is as well. Let me load the program and run it. I'll tap clear because it doesn't automatically clear the screen. The device has a resolution of 256 positions horizontally and 191 vertically. This matches well with the highest resolution the color computer could display. It also has margin detection. This means you do not have to sacrifice digitization area to use the pen as a command initiator. There are status bits for pen in proximity, pen down, top margin, and the last bit will be active for the side margins. Also, the bottom margin can be detected by Y coordinates greater than 191. You saw me previously use the erase function by just tapping the correct top margin space. Let me insert a different piece of paper and show some other functions. Here I use the line command to draw some lines. Now I'll choose the command to draw some circles. Center, radius. Center, radius. There is also a rectangle command. Corner one, corner two. Corner one, corner two. And finally, a freeform drawing tool. Now it is time to paint in some of these shapes and also show how to choose different colors. Paint, green, paint, yellow, here. Paint, yellow, here. Paint, blue, here. Let's set some type. Tap the tool and tap the start of the point. The text tool and the start. Let's, let's do another. Almost got it. Seeing type on a graphic screen is always cool for the color computer. In this case, it's using Color Basics draw font. The final tool is erase. It could use a bigger brush. One pixel at a time. Better than nothing. The last command to show off is copy. 
Here I select a square area, tab, and I can copy it to any other place. It has an interesting effect when you catch the edge of a of an element. It does a little weird fringing. As you can see, this is a very useful device, perfect for any of your color computer owning friends. The Color Computer Archive has a copy of this program and the manual if you'd like to check all this out for yourself. That was the demo. And now it's time for the sponsor of this video. <laughs> I want to take this opportunity to thank my brother Tim for uh, allowing Sibling Rivalry to sponsor this channel and this uh, episode that he's doing today. Uh, thanks, Tim. Yeah, it's a very special event, the Subtamity uh, video. Uh, we're very happy, uh, and I'm proud to be sponsoring me as well. <laughs> so go watch our sibling rivalry shows. Yeah, every Friday, a new episode. And now back to this. It's one thing to show you how the device is used. It's quite another to take it apart and figure out how it works. But first, let's look at this manual. It was clearly created by the same team that did Getting Started with Color Basic. See these wonderful drawings? and all the puns that are in the section headers. It really takes you through the simple and the advanced topics. I'm especially impressed with the code that calculates the area for an arbitrary shape. Of course, the manual isn't perfect. The demo program previously showed forgot to include a pclear statement, so it crashed when using the copy function. Also, in parts describing the text handling, it says it's using print at. But of course, every Coco programmer worth his salt knows you don't use print at on a graphic screen. This thing also came with an overlay. As an Intellivision owner, you know I can really appreciate a good overlay. It nicely shows the location and display area that you draw in. And the margins are pre-populated with the command names and the colors the demo program uses. Now let's move on to the device itself. First, let's check out the cable connecting the tablet and the pen to the cartridge. You can see some serious damage to the sheath. The plastic, shield, the plastic and shielding appears to be completely eaten away, probably by some varmint. Fortunately, the signal wires are still connected, and you saw the device still works. I guess I need to desolder these wires from the PC board and slip a new piece of Hinkstreet tubing over the damage. Does anyone have a recommendation for a nice supple and bendy brand of heat shrink tubing? The large box of crap I bought from Radio Shack just won't do. Also, let me know if you think I should repair the metal shielding before closing it up. Nice. Calls to action. It's called engagement, people. Taking a closer look at the pen, you can see the stark tip is removable. I checked with the multimeter to see if the plastic is conductive, and it's not. But there is an additional metal ring on the inside, near the tip. It makes contact with the pen body and probably has something to do with the pen's function. Inside the body you see a spring and a pen cartridge. This appears to be the original, so it isn't drawing very well anymore. And deep inside the body of the pen is a switch. That is what tells the device you've made contact with the surface. I was hoping it would feel clicky, but all I get is mush. There's also a small set screw retaining any electronics mystery. I won't be removing that. Be sure to thumbs down the video if this bothers you. Now let's open up the cartridge. This is what plugs into the computer. Hmm, no label. We spared no expense. Well, we'll unscrew the one screw holding it together. 
And here's the board. Wow, 18 chips. The last date code I can find is the 8th week of 1982. You'll find a list of the chips in the description. More analog stuff than I expected, but what did I expect? Comment below if you know. Let's take a look at the backside. Here's the back side of the board. Here's the bit I would have to desolder to repair the sheath. It doesn't seem that bad. Moving on to the main board, we'll unscrew this aluminum back. Be sure to thumbs down if you don't like the way I pronounce aluminum. Aluminum, aluminum, Karen. Here's the printed circuit board. Hmm, no chips, but there are four trim potentiometers. On one side we have horizontal traces, and on the other side we have vertical. Oh, and look at all these resistors. I'd tell you how it determines the position of the pin, but I have no idea. Your guess is better than mine. But at least you know what it looks like now. Well, that's it. Hopefully this video made it in time for Septandy 2023. I also hope you learned something. Bye.